Hello everyone and welcome to Topic A here on WYLN TV. I'm Gary Perna. This week I'm joined by State Representative Eddie Dapashinsky from Luzerne County. We're going to talk about a bill he's been working on for the last couple of years and why it's critical that this bill gets passed to help grandparents in our area. Plus we'll talk about some other issues facing the 121st District. That's all coming up on Topic A right here on WYLN. So don't go anywhere. All Care Home Care, providing quality in home care since 1986. Call and see how their team of licensed physical therapists, skilled nurses, speech, and occupational therapists can provide you with exceptional service in the comfort of your own home. They also offer dietitian, home health aid, and medical social worker services. You have a choice in your health care. For safe, friendly, qualified care, call All Care Home Care today and let their team begin taking care of you and your loved ones. Boyer Insurance Agency, 78 Sugarloaf Avenue in Sugarloaf. Quality coverage, competitive rates, discounts, recreational vehicles, boats, campers, and motorcycles. Find the coverage you want at the right price. Call them at 570-788-3543. Ralph M. Cameron, specializing in quality and affordable construction services for residential, commercial, and industrial. Licensed and insured. Call 570-401-0654 today for all your construction needs. SJ Kowalski is your Mitsubishi Diamond Contractor. They can install a Mitsubishi Electric Mr. Slim ductless heating and cooling system. Mr. Slim systems are designed to make any living space in your home inviting. You can have a different temperature control for every room in your home. The money-saving technology can save you 25 to 50% on your heating bill. For Mitsubishi, Renai, and trained comfort specialist, call SJ Kowalski at 570-455-2600. Join us this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. You're going to meet James, a wonderful gentleman who had a lot of pain and tried a lot of different things until he finally found Dr. Stacy and got some help. His story is this week on Let's Talk Chiropractic. Join us. back to Topic A here on WYLN. Everyone, I'm Gary Perrin. I'm very pleased to be back with everyone for 2018 here. And as we kick off this brand new season of Topic A, my guest uh, for the first show, 2018, State Representative Eddie Dapashinsky. Thanks so much for making the trip down uh, to Hazleton today. Well, thank you very much for having me and Happy New Year to you and of course to all your viewers. So um, you really have been pushing hard on one main topic. Um, for the last couple of years, and, and that is grandparents taking care of their grandchildren. And, you, you know, people say, oh, okay, yeah, well, they always take care of their grandchildren. No, we're talking about grandparents having to step in to basically raise uh, their grandchildren because of uh, maybe unforeseen circumstances that have happened. We've seen this num number rise over the last uh, couple of years due to the opioid e epidemic that is uh, facing our area. So there has been a lot going on since, and you start this back in 2015? 14, 15, 14, 15. Is what, yeah. So uh, talk about why you felt this is so important that we need some, some guidelines and, and, and some help for grandparents uh, who now may be raising their grandchildren. Well, Gary, you bring out a great point about the fact that most of us that are grandparents, and I'm very happy to say that I am a proud grandparent of seven kids, um, that's part of the family. Mm -hmm. You take a little responsibility, you help uh, with, the, with the grandkids as your son or daughter um, goes to work to provide for their family and so on. And then at the end of the day, guess what? You give those grandkids back to mm -hmm. the parents and, and they go on with their, their, uh, their life. Well, in this case, uh, I was uh, astonished to find out how many grandparents have been put into a situation where they are the only thing mm -hmm. that the uh, grandchildren have. And as I began discussions, uh, going back several years, uh, Senator Musto uh, began organizing our senior citizens. And then this problem began to arise mm -hmm. and there was discussions. And I was astonished to find out at this point, we have like 88,000 grandparents in Pennsylvania 
raising 195,000 grandchildren. Of that, 40% is due to the explosion of the opioid problem and alcoholism. And as a result, these grandparents do not have the legal authority mm -hmm. to be able to actually manage the life of their grandchildren. So they don't have what is called loco parentis. Well, but before you go into that, what happens right now if, if something would happen and the grandparent becomes the um, caretaker for uh, their grandchild? What can they do now? Is there a process they have to go through the court system? Yes. But, and how does that work right now before we go any further with the law? Well, th that's a good point. So if you're in that situation, mm -hmm. God forbid something happens to your daughter or your son, they're no longer available to be able to appropriately take care of their children. You now take care of these grandchildren. Mm -hmm. Could be one, two, could be three or four. Right. Now all of a sudden, what do you do? Well, if it means you have to enroll them in school or if it means you have to take them to a doctor for, for care, you don't have that right. Mm -hmm. So in order before for you to do that, you then have to go to the court. You have to petition the court to give you that responsibility, that uh, permission to be able to do that. That's a very costly process. It's also a process that takes time. Mm -hmm. Many of these grandparents don't have those kind of resources. Right. Generally, when people retire, you've worked all your life to be able to have X amount of dollars. You think that's enough to be able to make it out until you say goodbye to the world. Now, all of a sudden, imagine that same grandparent with now a child to take mm -hmm. care of. The cost, the, uh, the kind of pressure that's involved taking right. care of that child. And, and it could be all ages. Everything from you know a, a one or two year old to someone who is 12, 13, 14, 15 years old. And Ex around here, especially in the you know the greater Luzerne County area, we see a lot of our elderly who, um, on their retirement, maybe just be getting uh, Social Security. Uh, they've worked in the garment factories or in the coal mines or in some type of industry where there may not have been a, a 401k or a, or a pension. So they're they're leaning on just Social Security. Uh, I know uh, my you know my grandmothers. Um, my one worked in the garment industry. She, you know, got a little over twelve hundred dollars a month, and that's what she had. You know, if she had to take one of her one of ten, you know, grandchildren in, you know, it, that would be a real burden on her. I seen her struggle just for herself uh, on what things to do. Couldn't imagine now putting, you know, a, another, uh, you know, grandchild in that mix where she had to provide for them and make sure all their needs were taken care of too. Well, again, you're you're bringing up the reality of mm -hmm. the of the problem. Um, and then fortunately, hopefully, you know, some people have enough financial mm -hmm. resources that they'll be able to provide clothing and, and appropriate food mm -hmm. and, and other activities they can participate in. 20% of all the grandparents of those 88,000, that's over 17,000, mm -hmm. are on the poverty level themselves. Something close to right. what you were talking about, your gram. You know, uh, I come from the same kind of background. Uh, my grandparents worked but they didn't have a lot of money at the end. Right. And if it wasn't for Social Security, they would have little or nothing. Right. So uh, it is a, an incredible challenge. And what I'm trying to do is, number one, I appreciate you having me on so that maybe we could continue to spread the word. Number one, I'm looking for our government to help these people out. Mm -hmm. And why am I doing that? Number one, it does help the grandparents out. But it helps us all out in the long run, because if those children are properly cared for, and the statistics demonstrate that when you're taking in by a relative, mm -hmm. that child has a much r more relaxed and easier transition to make than if you're with a stranger. Well, that was what I wanted to ask you. We're also seeing large numbers of children in, in foster care and other type of situations now. So this would be able to hopefully uh, House Bill 1539 would be able to help the grandparents out where they may not have to see, you know, if their grandchildren or somebody has to go into foster care because they, they can't handle it. They can't be able to do uh, all this and take on this responsibility. Well, there are grandparents that can't do it, and then those children do go into mm -hmm. foster care. And thank God we have foster care. Right. Um, but foster care is about $26 per child per mm -hmm. day. So you multiply that over a period of a year, you're talking about almost $10,000. Now multiply it by the 195,000 of these grandchildren, mm -hmm. it's over a billion dollars, it's several billion. Right. 
So what I'm saying and what many of those that are supporting me are saying is these grandparents are saving the taxpayers, saving Pennsylvania a lot of money. Can we find some resources to help them mm -hmm. raise these grandchildren? The other point I want to make is when you raise the child appropriately and that child has a chance for the proper education, mm -hmm. the proper nurturing, chances are that child is going to be success in life. Right. So they will contribute back to the community, back to society. If a child is lost mm -hmm. and then ends up on the streets, ends up in, in corrections, incarcerated, it's $45,000 right. for every prisoner. That's the last thing we want. So this is a way for me to bring this uh, particular issue to attention. And again, I thank you and YLN for doing this. And hopefully we can get enough support to try to get my colleagues to support it and move this legislation. All right, we're gonna take a short break right there. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about exactly what House Bill 1539 calls for uh, and maybe how you can help in getting some other legislators on board with this. Stay with us on Topic A, everyone. We'll be right back after this. away. That's right, you're just minutes away from a great deal on a new car, truck, or SUV from Barbara Ford. Two great locations, Exeter and Hazleton. The best deals on America's number one brand are just 25 minutes from Frackville, 26 minutes from Jim Thorpe, 28 minutes from Tamaqua, 20 minutes from Chabertown, and 28 minutes from Clark Summit. Barbara Ford in Exeter and Hazleton. Online at barbaraautogroup.com, where nobody but nobody sells for less. Tune in each week to WYLN TV 35 to watch the number one Hazleton-based broadcast television talk show, The Storm, hosted by Tiffany Cloud. Candidates, politicians, community leaders, and more appear on The Storm when they want to be heard. New shows air Wednesdays at 8 p.m. and these additional airtimes only on WYLN TV 35. We're your local network. Non-attorney spokesperson. Attention. Have you been seriously injured or has a loved one been killed in a motor vehicle accident? Call 800-305-5643. For a free legal case review, you may be entitled to compensation. Personal injuries can happen at any point in your lifetime. And in a few seconds, you or a loved one may suffer debilitating injuries that could change your life forever. For over 25 years, the Pulaski Law Firm has been an advocate for those who have been seriously injured. Let the lawyers at the Pulaski Law Firm get the compensation you may justly deserve. If you have been seriously injured and suffered permanent injuries, burns, and broken bones, or a loved one has been killed because of a car, truck, or motorcycle accident, call 800-305-5643. Get some peace of mind now. Call 800-305-5643. For a free consultation, you may be entitled to compensation. Call 800-305-5643. Northeast Gold and Silver inside the Churchill Mall is paying cash for gold and silver. Top dollar for silver coins, national currency, fine and sterling flatware. Stop in or call them at 570-497-4177. Valmont Auto Sales. Buy here, pay here with a good selection of clean pre-owned vehicles. Use your tax return and make small weekly payments to fit your budget. Valmont Auto Sales, 34 Susquehanna Boulevard, West Hazleton, 570-501-2626. In a world where an instant tweet can create a firestorm of news coverage, WYLN is moving with the times, allowing for more instant reporting of breaking news on television and on social media, as well as regular hourly news updates. News gets out faster than ever before, and WYLN brings it all to you. Live weekdays at 5.30 only on WYLN, where your local network. Welcome back to Topic A here on WYLN. I'm Gary Perna. I'm very pleased to have State Representative Eddie Davishinsky with us from Luzerne County. And we're talking about uh, grandparents caring for grandchildren. Right now, uh, House Bill 1539, uh, Representative, what does it call for and, and what will it do to change uh, the laws here in Pennsylvania? One of the things that 
we recognized when we first started in the project of trying to understand the grandparents raising grandchildren was that they don't have what's called loco parentis, which means they don't really have any authority over mm -hmm. uh, that child. And the only way you can get it is by going to the court uh, common pleas, and that means they have to hire an attorney and then they have to prove their case and so on. If my bill were to pass, they'd only have to do that once, mm -hmm. and then they would get what is called temporary guardianship. And that temporary guardianship would give them that local parentis uh, for a period of 60 days, which can then be uh, reissued again up to a total of a year. After that point, you're hoping that whatever the problem is in the family, it's reconciled, and as a result, uh, the parent will assume the responsibility. If it doesn't, then you would do that same process. Right now, they have to do that on a regular basis, mm -hmm. which costs a lot of money for attorneys, costs a lot of time, and as a result, it also causes a lot of uh, disruption to the family itself. My bill would also uh, demonstrate to the parent that the grandparents are not trying to uh, maintain custody, not right. trying to take that child away, to give the parent a chance to straighten their lives out and then still have those children. Uh, so it, they'd have to go before a, a, a jurist and make sure that uh, they present their case and then the, uh, the, the judge would then uh, approve or disapprove. Mm -hmm. There's also provisions in the bill to make sure that you're not just giving that child mm -hmm. uh, to that grandparent without uh, due vetting. They would check background checks. Right. Uh, are, are there any arrest notices or anything of that nature? Uh, child predators, mm -hmm. anything of that nature in that family? The judge obviously wouldn't let that happen. So we're assuming right now that it's for a loving grandparent uh, want to take in their grandchildren, but we put in safeguards in there right. to prevent any kind of mishaps. And also, uh, if this bill would pass signed by the governor, what? Um, the, the main thing, really, we talked about the first part, would be uh, financially able to do this. What, uh, what precautions are in this bill to make sure that grandparents will be receiving some type of help while they have this, this grandchild? Absolutely nothing. Nothing. So okay. I'm having to go at this a piece at a time. Okay. Um, and for your audience, there's never enough money for all of the things that we need. Right. So I do not have a pot of money for this. Remember, 20% of mm -hmm. those grandparents are um, on, on welfare at that point. So what I'm trying to do now is at least eliminate that continuous cost of legal fees, okay. getting attorneys to constantly go back and forth to give them the right to take that child to the doctor or to ta enroll mm -hmm. them in school. That's step one. Step two, I also have a resolution that's asking uh, for a complete review. Mm -hmm. Have our state joint government committee do a one-year um, review of the process. Find out how many uh, grandparents are actually doing this. Mm -hmm. We believe that there's far more than 88,000 because many uh, don't feel comfortable to let people know their problems. And I understand that, right. we all understand that. So this joint uh, commission would then demonstrate the kinds of needs that are out there. Another point that I want to make to everyone is that if this ever does occur in your family, you can go to the Department of uh, Area on Aging. Mm -hmm. They will help guide you. You can go to my website. Uh, we were able to put a website together so that if you're, a brand, if you're a grandparent in this brand new situation, you have no idea where to go, you go on to Pashinsky, EddieDayPashinsky.com, and then you will find in their grandparents raising grandchildren. Click on there, and then there will be a series of contacts, phone numbers okay. for, for you to call. And of course, my office also, feel free, will try to help like you. Like a full resource center for they yes. can go on and see this. Um, one of the things that you said, and it, it rang a bell in my head, for many, many years, especially in some areas of our community, they didn't want to talk about what may have been going on in their family, so they, no one would ever know what was happening. <laughs> we also see, excuse me, um, parents and the grandchildren living with the grandparents, so if something would happen, you may not know anything's different, so yeah. how would they know uh, who, how to help or what to do? So getting people to open up and say, listen, this, this is the situation we, you know, we're in now, how can we get help? Which is a, a big step for it, some it, people to do. It is a big step because try for those that are listening, imagine now all of a sudden you have your grandchildren. What do you do? Mm -hmm. Where do you go for help? So that's why we put together this website. That was my original bill mm -hmm. back in 1415, House Bill 662. 
And we got it passed out of the House. I couldn't get it through the Senate. But because of that, we were able to develop this website. And then that was at least the source mm -hmm. that someone could go to and then begin to peruse that and find out because everybody has a different problem. Mm -hmm. Some might have a financial problem, some might have a mental health problem, someone might have a physical problem. Right. So there's different areas that they can go to. And, and that is there, we wanna expand that so that it's available to the state. So if people all know that I'm doing this, it, it doesn't mean anything to the people in Western right. Pennsylvania. Um, you, you said one thing um, in there about describing the House bill. Um, being able to go through some of these safeguards and these checks to make sure everything's okay to go through. Because, and you just said, you know, you may have a grandparent who may be suffering with, with the onsets of Alzheimer's sure. or may, you know, and, and so there may be some outlining issues that you want to make sure the child is getting the 100 percent uh, best care that they can be getting while the situation is going on. So this isn't an overnight process. You know, the bill passes, it's, it's not going to happen tomorrow. The, the parent or the grandparents and, and the grandchildren, this may be a process for them, but this is a step one to making sure that everyone is taken care of properly and securely. Definitely a step in the right direction. We get this passed. Now that makes it easier for them to be able to manage those mm -hmm. children. The next step would be to try to find ways that we could find some financial sources to help some of those parents. Mm -hmm. And one of the other big things for grandparents, and as you and I talked off camera, you know, I'm a grandparent and I love it, but at the end of the day, I can give my grandchildren back. I now have time to sit back, relax, and watch a show or whatever. Mm -hmm. They don't. Yeah. So respite becomes mm -hmm. a big thing. So we're talking about how can we get those grandchildren to like YMCA, CYC, right. at little or no cost to the grandparents to give them some time away. Many of these parents have to work, these grandparents. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So not all of them are retired. Mm -hmm. Many of them are 50, 60 years old and still work and have to work. Then you also have those that were on the, on the precipice of retiring and saying, I can't afford to retire now. I have to continue to work right. because of my grandchildren. There, there's just a, a myriad of problems that these folks face every day. All right, we're going to take a break right there. Stay with us here on Topic A, everyone. We'll be right back after the break. Look, I may be out of line here, but I have to get something off my chest. The little guys in the shop are taking all the credit for this year's number one request, Service Electric's high-speed Internet. Sure, it's great. I mean, it flies, and I should know. But the little guys don't even make it. Service Electric does. There, someone finally had the antlers big enough to say it. They can't tell it's me, right? Uh-oh. Get Service Electric high-speed Internet free for two months, including free installation. Call today or visit secb.com slash holiday. For over 25 years, Whitetail Preserve Shooting Range, 118 Boulevard Road, Bloomsburg, has provided professionally designed skeet, trap, and sporting clay fields. All stations are handicapped accessible with resident NRA certified shooting instructors on site. There are packages available to fit anyone's budget, restaurant, and catering on site. Our facility is also available for weddings, business meetings, bachelor, and private parties. Call 570-384-2314. Third Base Luncheonette, still making memories after all these years. Watch off the beaten path on WYLN TV 35 and discover the Pennsylvania you never knew existed.
and welcome back to Topic 8 here on WYLN, everyone. I'm Gary Perna. Um, Representative, we, we're talking about uh, the grandparents' grandchildren bill and where it sits now. So right now, where does House Bill uh, 1539 sit and what's the next step for it? Well, I'm pleased to say that I'm working uh, bipartisanship uh, with uh, Chairman Watson, Catherine Watson. She's the Chair Lady of Children and Youth. We've had uh, numerous discussions and now we're trying to work that into a schedule where we can present it to the committee get it voted out of committee, then get it onto the floor, voted out of the floor, and then try to work with our Senate counterparts mm -hmm. to make sure we have them on board. Uh, we're doing this in a bipartisan uh, fashion because grandparents aren't of one political party mm -hmm. uh, and uh, we re represent everyone. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, just had a meeting last week with uh, her executive director and now that the holidays are over this will be one of our main uh, courses of action. Uh, I want to change uh, topics real quick. Uh, you are the Democratic Chair of the Agriculture and Rural, um, Rural Affairs uh, Committee. Um, a lot going on at the time of the taping of this show. The farm show has yep. just kicked off. Um, we're, and, and some believe I was reading about the farm show. I've gone to it for a bunch of years. I can't wait to go again this year. Um, all the different things that go into our farm show that are made right here in Pennsylvania. Uh, so I know um, you will be uh, making sure you get a stop there and pick up a milkshake or something. So I already had uh, one. You did one? <laughs> all right, I'm great for mine. Uh, so real quickly, um, sitting on that committee, seeing what goes on, you know, how proud are you to see all these things being uh, shown off here in Pennsylvania? Well, I cannot tell you how excited I am. I'm a city kid, so how do I become the uh, ag chair? <laughs> All I can tell you is it's one of the best experiences that's happened to me uh, being a legislator. And I would encourage all of your listeners to consider going to the largest indoor mm -hmm. farm show in the entire United States here in Pennsylvania. Pennsylvania provides an enormous amount of food, not just for Pennsylvania, mm -hmm. but for the country and for the world. Uh, there's over 500,000 jobs that's involved in uh, agriculture. It's worth billions and billions of dollars to the people of Pennsylvania. And there's so much that they do not know mm -hmm. because I didn't know it either. You know, I was never involved. Uh, the, the most I <laughs> tell everybody I did was I took care of my grandfather's pigeon coop. I watered the tomatoes and picked them. You know, so now uh, agriculture is looked upon primarily as growing corn, milk, and, and cattle. It's far more than that. It's science, it's chemistry, it's banking, it's uh, machinery, it's a, a whole system mm -hmm. that uh, is needed in order to provide the food that we all consume. You may have heard of PA Preferred. Yes. I like to say homegrown in PA. Mm -hmm buy PA Preferred because that's you're supporting your Pennsylvania farmer. Those Pen Pennsylvania farmers obviously, you know, bring back the dollars back to Pennsylvania. It's a magnificent uh, um, operation. There's over 13,000 events, mm -hmm. items, uh, demonstrations. They have chef, they have rodeo. I'm going to be in the, uh, <laughs> in the wagon race. I'm going to be driving a team of wagons. You got to see this city kid do it. <laughs> well, I don't mind be. telling you, I came in sixth place last year. I got a ribbon and everyone was surprised, including myself <laughs> out of 24 uh, riders. So it's, it's just a lot of fun. And I know um, one of the things, we've done so many stories on Pia Preferred, and we have so many right here in our area. Um, people don't realize that the, the Drums area, the Barnesville area, we still have a lot of farms that uh, still provide for this area, which is so great that we have here. Um, and make sure when you go out, you look for that little Pia Preferred. I remember doing a story on it, and then the next shopping trip my wife and I went on, I'm looking through everything, and she's like, why don't you just get this so we can go? And I said, no, I'm trying to find the Pia Preferred exactly. product. Exactly, grown in Pia. Uh, right. And, and it's so great and it helps our economy uh, so much uh, e e and grow right here in Pennsylvania. Uh, Representative, thank you so much for coming on uh, with us. Again, so much going on. If you want more information on uh, grandparents raising grandchildren, if you are a grandparent who needs some information, you can look up uh, a state representative's website. Also, his uh, phone number has been at the bottom of our screen. Even if you don't live in his district, That's maybe right. give him a call. That's he correct. can get you uh, in touch with uh, who you need to and get you the resources you need. Again, even if you know somebody who may be struggling with this, give him a call and uh, hopefully we can get them some help. And again, if you live outside of our representative's district out of outside the 121st in Luzerne County. Uh, call your local representatives and senators and get this on uh, their plate and say, hey, listen, this may be a great thing to help us out in the future. Thanks for joining us here on Topic A, everyone. We'll see you next time here and only here on WYLN TV.